Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us in this service. We begin with a prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we beseech you to direct, sanctify and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that through your most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul, through our Lord and our Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 1 to 5. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labour for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourself in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me, listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. Now, when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate, and all were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Here is a reflection on the Gospel reading of today. The story of Jesus feeding the 5,000 appears in all the Gospels with slight variance in the story, but I like John's version because it seems to provide a few more details than the others, and so I'll make a few references from John's version of the story which are not found in Matthew's. Throughout Jesus' ministry, the disciples watched him perform many miracles. They saw him cure the sick. They saw him heal the paralytic and cure the blind. But Jesus knows, and we can see from the perspective of 2,000 years now, that what truly cures the sick is their faith in the possibility of a cure. We have some examples from the Gospel of Mark where Jesus says to the healed person, your faith has made you well. Like the woman with the issue of blood or the blind man. Jesus performed these miracles very well knowing that what was needed had already been provided and what was required was a shift of the sick person's vision from what appeared to be to what could be or even more accurately to what already was. Because if you really think of it, what God can do, God has already done. So the gospel story of today about the miracles of loaves and fish provides a perfect example of this crucial shift from a lack thinking to abundance thinking. The disciples complain to Jesus that there are 5,000 people who need feeding. According to John's version of the story, the disciples seemingly have done their maths. Philip, one of the disciples, has estimated the number of the people in the crowd. He has estimated that there are about 5,000 people. He has estimated how many loaves of bread it will take to feed them, the cost of a loaf of bread, and calculated even 200 silver coins, which would have been equivalent to six months' wages, would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. There is simply not enough to go around. And Andrew, the other disciples, is of the same opinion. But he points out that there is a boy who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Actually, if you work it out, it is one fish for every 2,500 people and one loaf for every 1,000 people. Or based upon a loaf of bread from our local Tesco or Waitrose store, it's about one slice for every 90 people. So Andrew has done the maths and he knows there is just not enough to go around. It does seem that that is how we often approach life, by doing maths. We count what is there, though we too often focus on what is not there. And pretty soon, the reality of the circumstances or the situations we are going through blinds us to the possibility of what might be. And whilst doing our maths do in most times provide for accurate forecast and vision, it can some of the times shrink our vision. Our vision becomes narrow and we are unable to see a way forward. 
we are unable to see the Christ in our midst because we are seeing through a dark lens of scarcity or lack. And as long as we have such a mathematical approach to life, and by this I mean approaching life as a problem to be solved, there will never be enough to go around. Jesus was not asking Philip to do the maths when he said to him, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? It appears to be a test. Would Philip look around or would he look within? Would he see with his physical eyes or with the eyes of his heart? Would he focus on what was not there? Or would he focus on Jesus who is God's abundance? Jesus' teaching here is that the problem really is not lack of fish and bread, but a lack of vision. According to Jesus, it's not as if abundance wasn't already there. Abundance was and always has been here right before us. Sometimes we just need someone to help us find it and to point it out. To show us that it is already here and to remind us of what really matters most. In the Gospel reading, Jesus could easily have allowed divine abundance to express through him immediately the disciples approached him with a problem, but he did not. Instead, he throws the problem back to these disciples and says to them, you yourselves give them something to eat. It is only then that he proceeds to demonstrate divine abundance in the miracle of loaves and fish as a metaphor of abundance as a presence, abundance as a way of being and seeing, as opposed to a source to be counted. You and I, even today, we have the tendency to take our problems to Jesus in the expectation and hope that he will solve them for us. Every day, we encounter the 5,000. We encounter them in our own very selves. We encounter them in our friends and families, in our relationships and in our work. We encounter the 5,000 in our faith and prayers and in our challenges and hopes and even in our dreams. Where are we to buy bread for these 5,000? Amen.
Lord, open our eyes to your presence and our minds to your teachings as we bring our prayers to you today. We give thanks for the abundance of spiritual comfort you give to us as we gather either in our church here at Bledlow or together following online services. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Thank you for our church, for Reverend Norbert and his dedicated team who have kept our church services alive with our virtual services and who are now guiding us safely back into church where we can worship together. We thank you for bringing Reverend Alan Garrett to us here at Holy Trinity and to give Norbert the support he so deservedly requires. Bless all our clergy as they take on the burdens of others while mindfully protecting their congregation and keeping your faith alive within our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our world and all world leaders who are thrown into political dilemmas while making difficult decisions to protect their people from the spread of COVID-19. Protect the countries throughout the world where the second wave is seen to be increasing and we pray especially for those living in the north of England where lockdown has been reimposed. May they and their families, for the safety of others, abide by these rules, knowing that through their sacrifices they are protecting themselves and others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for our own lives here at Bledlow, where we have the countryside to feel freedom and beautiful gardens to tender and relax in. Let us, though, not forget those less fortunate and ask you that you give inner peace as they struggle with overcrowded cities and loss of jobs. Protect our key workers who are tirelessly continuing to carry out their jobs to provide us with the support our country needs. And we ask too that you give hope to our younger generation as they fear for their futures, that they may develop skills to overcome any adversities that lie ahead, knowing that you will be by their side supporting them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, we ask for your healing power on those who are enduring pain and illness. Give them knowledge that you are there with them, holding them in your arms and supporting them through their darkest moments. Give strength to their families who feel and live their pain and we ask you to fill their lives with your peace and strength. In a moment of silence, let us pray for all those known only to us that you will strengthen them and heal their pain. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. How can we such great wealth afford to build for you this temple, Lord? This abundance which we give with pride is only, Lord, what you provide. Lord, never let my heirs forget how they are always in your debt, and wisdom grant, my dearest Son, to build on all that I have begun.
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And we now pray for God's blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us, now and forever. Amen. Thank you.